Hey, how you guys all doing? Let's do it to it. We'll get on to our studies. And then start uh, going over some more stuff we've learned. Okie dokie, um, <clears throat> let's do it. Let's set this one position up here. It's an end game uh, position, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the placement of pieces, they either work, either it works harder or you trade it. <clears throat> we learned that from um, uh, last night that you need to actually have your pieces work hard. Otherwise, if they don't work hard then the, and they're not doing to the max of their efficiency, you need to uh, trade it off for a more effective piece of your opponent's that's working harder than your piece. And therefore, uh, then the trade will actually be worth your while. Okay, it's uh, white to play, and we'll do a study right here. <clears throat> hey, how you doing? Yeah, we're going over um, uh, work it or trade it. That that's the that's the name of the uh, section. But it's in uh, habits on Andrew Solstice's most recent uh, book on. Uh, let me see what's it called. Oh, what it takes to become a chess master. Okay. I, I okay here. We look at it from White's perspective. Perfect. On large this, I'm gonna give you a um, second, my chess friends, to uh, take a look and see what do you think the best move for uh, Black. Would, I mean, White would be here. This is an exclaim move for White. And it's a little interesting. I'll, I'll give you that. It's uh, one of those moves that you're going to have to remember all the lessons. And if you've wet, gone over all of our, um, <clears throat> uh, what we just went over for the past like four or five days, you'll kind of see this move. It's one of those that you have to, um, just see it, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to think how to how to explain it. It's there. It's not. It's not about calculation. It's about the idea of a winning position. I'll give you that. Uh, we'll we'll say that um, this is probably a Karpovian uh, type of a move. This is a Karpo Kar Karpov move, and Karpov most definitely would spot this move. So I'm going to say it's a positional uh, move, and I'm going to give you a second, kind of to uh, a minute or so to look at it, and I'll be right back because you have to, this is the, a really important move, and it'll test, it, see if you're in the calculating mode or if you're in the idea mode and what you want as a plan. See, once you start calculating, you're you're doing move you're doing moves see you have to get a plan a plan is based on ideas and ideas could be trading off a, a bad piece for a better piece an idea could be trading off a, a piece of uh, like rooks so that you get a outpost for a knight 
it could be it could be going into a uh, closed uh, center and then playing against a good knight versus bad bishop those type of ideas take that and then apply it to this and I'll see how you do when I get right back okay keep uh, take a step uh, a chance at it and give it your best chance bye bye Okie dokie. If uh, you chose uh, Rook D uh, C7, yeah, uh, that is correct. Oh, does that have to do with the, oh attacking the double pawns? Um, oops. Mm, not not really. On uh, it, it is a, uh, it is kind of like that idea, but um, the reason that um, rook c, uh, d, uh, c c seven actually doesn't um, work in this position is because of uh, the idea that the rook guards it. So if uh, if you were planning uh, c c seven, rook c c seven, it it's not the best move. The surprising Karpovian idea is rook uh, d c7, and uh, it is. And the bishop covers, um, you know, the g5 pawn. And if if uh, you were thinking that of playing something like maybe rook c6, the king could actually come up to g7 and support the bishop, and basically. This is almost a fortress-like position. Um, there's if the rook tries doubling up here, you always have a uh, rook idea of rook e7, <clears throat> and therefore if the rook moves here, you, uh, you have there, and it's there's really no way you can uh, make any progress here. If you try attacking, doubling up with the rooks here, all you do is win a pawn and two pawns are not enough uh, to win against three when there's enough material advantage. So what uh, the idea of uh, rook d c7 was based on is based on the idea of uh, trading down a, the majority uh, the piece on uh, c8 going to c8 and then trading off into a um, an exchange up variation of play. That's what White noticed is that they're up a uh, an exchange. So if they can trade off a rook uh, for one of their rooks, then they'll be able to play against a bishop, and more likely they'll in this open 
position they'll be able to uh, dominate the bishop. And so the um, g uh, g7 was played, <clears throat> and now we played rook c8 exclaim, and rook takes c8, uh, rook takes c8, and now, uh, oops, sorry, I need to go back here. I need to read this to you what what the author was saying. We had this kind of a position in mind when we made a uh, decision several moves ago. Let's see, let's make sure here. Yeah. Uh, we, the the players had this um, type of uh, set up in mind um, when they had uh, several moves ago. But why did he uh, think he could win this? After all, the pawns lie on only one one wing of the board. Black has doubled pawns, but they do a good job of preventing white from creating a pass pawn. Actually, this is uh, a very simple win if you visualize what it would be like if a pair of rooks had been traded. Suppose the rook on c4 uh, were traded off for the rook on f8. Uh, and they both disappeared off the board in in, a, in positions like that. Like that, Joel Ka, Joel Raul Capablanca would say White wins in one move. He was joking. The move is White's king on e8. In other words, one pair of rooks is gone, and White needs to win. And White needs to win is his attack is now available on f7. So what, what what Joel was talking about is if we could trade off this rook for that rook and then we get a king to f8 or e8 we then can start uh, taking uh, an attack on f7. <clears throat> Black could either lose the f, a, a, f pawn or advance it creating a new target at g6 and then just a matter of applying pressure to whatever weakness is given to white at that point. When at whatever uh, uh, black plays after a, one of the rooks is traded off, if they push the f pawn, uh, the other pawns become weak, and the rooks will take take care of that. And one rook will take care of a bishop and a king as long as the other king gets involved too. And so that's the idea here, trading off. Yeah. Thanks to the ability uh, to visualize, Kappa like a, likes a winning future position. White doesn't have to calculate what follows. The game went with um, Bishop d4, Rook c4. Bishop e5, Rook c6, King f8, King f1, and King e7, King e2, get the king evolved of course. King f8, rook c5, bishop f6, king c7, bishop e5, rook b7. White could have chosen other squares for the rook without damaging his winning chance chances. The next stage was to advance the king uh, towards uh, e8, king to e8, and play went more like king g7, king d3, bishop d6, king d4, <clears throat> king f6, pawn g3 for white, exclaim, to uh, basically uh, stunt the bishop. Bishop d2, 
chain D6, or not D6. Wait a second, did I? I missed something somewhere, hold on. Yeah, okay, it's that, my bad, D, uh, sorry, D, F4, King D5, there we go. I knew I missed a line somewhere. G3 attack, uh, not G3. Uh, oh, King F, uh, F6. Now pawn G3 makes more sense. Because now you're attacking the bishop. Bishop D2. How could bishop go to D2? Oh, D2 is right here. King uh, uh, D6. Bishop E1. Uh, Rook B1. And if he, if he takes the, on the pawn here, the rook was slided pinned. So this, in theory, is a poison. Bishop takes here, rook comes there, and, and white's winning. So once the king is close to, uh, for white to um, f7, white frees his rook with the, with, uh, from the defense of the pawn by advancing them to light squares. Uh, so uh, bishop c, uh, this is actually what was here, bishop c3. Rook um, b7, king f, huh. oops, excuse me on that one, rook b3 I mean, to attack the bishop, I knew that there was something, uh, bishop uh, e5 check, king d7, rook g7, Rook B uh, seven, <clears throat> King F eight, and then G uh, four, Bishop D four, F three, Bishop uh, E oops E five, Rook uh, B five. Four, rook c5, bishop d2, c7, c8 check, king g7, king e8. And at this point, the game's won. This is a one uh, game for white here. There's no way that um, black can win here. It's actually resignable right now. The uh, f7 pawn is going to fall, and uh, so the, there is no defense to white getting his rook to the seventh rank and basically attacking the king. The easier way to win is to get the king to e6 uh, if, uh, if the pawn, this pawn, gets moved. King to e6. Let's say the pawn goes to f6. King e6 would be where white wants to go. <clears throat> so black tries uh, f5 right away. Rook c7 check. Can get king uh, f6. White went white went after the new target of on g6. With king do f f8 exclaim. Threatening uh, uh, rook c, uh, c6, king up, and then either knight, uh, king up here, either knight or king here on f7 or king on uh, g7. Either one of those would be uh, viable uh, spots for the king to go to. e5, pawn e5, I mean king e5, king f7. King F uh, F4, 
and then king takes uh, g6 and it's resignable here at this point wow nah nah I'm just we're just working right now Okay, so now now we kind of get the idea basically why um, White played here was to get the the first thing was to trade off the rooks, and after the rook pair was see they're they're not um, White doesn't calculate out forty moves for this. All they needed to do was White needed to calculate out um, rook d c seven, king g seven. Uh, rook c8 and then takes now after this position white accomplished one of their plans was to get uh, the rooks off the board next uh, white had to see that the next idea is to get the king to e8 and uh, weaken uh, the position with uh, oops 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 we can not, not like that weaken the position with black playing f5 get the king here is an important move getting the king there and then there could be small mini plans in your setup you don't have to have one ginormous plan for the setup and we'll uh, we'll go well and we probably should go over that huh so I mean let's just finish this out oops and so that so we get to see how uh, black and white does that and the reason you're probably wondering why did the rook play to um, c6 that was to stop the king from actually coming up the board to f6 so that allowed the king to go back king comes up the board up the board the king goes and then you attack the bishop the bishop moves king up And then now the next move after the king got close enough to e8, uh, the next plan for uh, white was to put all the pawns on the opposite color of black's bishop, which makes uh, black's bishop very weak and uh, passive. And that's what white did. And then they, after that plan, which was a two-move plan, they then went after um, going after the f7 pawn. And the king came in, and after a king e8 for white, there was no way really to stop the loss of f7. So black actually had to secede and create a new weakness on g6, and that's why the the king came up and took. And at this point, it's game set match. And now the next section of of habits is uh, the next section is called must calc calculation. The, we're going to learn when it's a must to calculate. There's points at when calculation is a must and there's points when ideas are enough which an idea could be a five five move idea which means it's not calculating. Calculating is when you go into uh, deep lines, long long lines. Um, ideas are like plans that you set up, plans that you uh, implement like I, I like uh, pos positions that you know by heart that you don't really need to calculate and the more that's why studying is important <clears throat> and if you spot a tactic you don't really need to think about that tactic anymore because you already have the tactic down that you know and that's what the super grandmasters and grandmasters and masters and all the candidate masters have an understanding of they don't waste their uh, energy on um, non-important calculations they always calculate on the most important moves or ideas so they come up with ideas and then they calculate based on ideas not about just like my opponent moves here I move there back forth that nope 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 we don't do that 
we make a plan and then we see then we count then we can calculate to see if the plan actually works and it could be like what Jeremy Silman talks about in the reassess your chest um, fourth edition that uh, it could be based on an imbalance it could be based on that your king's castle your opponent's is it so you take advantage of this the king still in the center those are ideas and uh, that's that's um, if you want to improve as a chess player you have to be able to come up with ideas that are positionally that's how Karpov and the greats got so good calculation will only take you so far okay let's see here and make sure that we have uh, this here perfect okay and it's white to move so great we'll just uh, do this here put into study to play. So I'm make sure I have that guy's name spelled right. Yep, yes, yeah, so far so good. Yes, excellent. Okay, <clears throat> this is what it says. There are not there naturally bound uh, to be times, there's bound to be times in a game, particularly a complex game, you absolutely must, so this is an absolute must, calculate. High on the list are situations such as you are defending. Defending tends to require more exact and thorough calculation than attacking. On the other hand, when, uh, when you have the initiative are simply better developed, you can sometimes rely on calculating uh, calculating minimally minimally he said and this is a game between um, excuse me uh, I'm not exactly sure that the white is spelled K H O L M O V and black is S E no S U E T I N so Excuse me. There we go. And uh, so, white white's advantage advanced advantage in development is minimized by the well placed uh, black queen and knight. To white uh, to white, those pieces are what matter most. So white has more development, but the wonderful place queen for black on c5 and the wonderful place knight on f4 make uh, black's position about balanced to white's position even though um, white has more development and so that's that's kind of what we're looking at here there is a way to deal with uh, with them both there's a way to deal with them both do you see the idea tell me if you're uh, Actually, what we're gonna, what I want you to do is, if you're watching this pre-recording, and it's on YouTube, which is uh, I have a YouTube site, of course, uh, you can stop right now, go over the uh, the YouTube, the stop right now, go over this position, see if you can spot the idea that allows White to to deal with both of Black's problems. Are, are kind of make black's advantage go away and uh, make white have an advantage at that point. So I'll give you a minute starting right, uh, tell you when, right about now. I'll give you one minute to look at it. So give it your best. You're white, find the move that's an interesting move that helps um, cause white to get a slight advantage at this point.
Okay, you got 30 seconds. I'll give you that. I'll tell you when it's the 15 second warning too. 15 seconds. And I'll tell you a 5 second warning when that happens. 5 second warning. Okay. Now the idea is actually queen uh, e3 which is an interesting continuation for white. You had to have calculated, hold on, let me get the interesting mark. You had to have calculated that if queen takes, pawn takes, what to do after this move. White realizes it was worth calculating. He saw that uh, knight g6 could be played here, and knight b3 would give him a sizable edge after knight to uh, c5 and then uh, he would have max development over um, white for a right, I mean for black, white would have over black. Uh, what was actually played here was uh, queen e7 white. Uh, black noticed that idea and didn't go down it. So um, what, what they're saying is after, uh, let me see here, if after this point here, knight e6, uh, he saw that his time, his time, that his time, his knight should go to, now it's time for his knight to go to um, f3, uh, and then target e5, the e5 pawn here. And after uh, a6, takes, root takes, and then knight takes e5. White has a big edge at this point. Even if uh, knight uh, c5 is played, we have knight uh, d7 exclaim. And this will, would give white a uh, huge edge at this point because he's up a whole pawn. He also loses a uh, in uh, a pawn if knight to uh, e6, bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, bishop takes f7. And if king takes f7, pawn takes f7, and he's still up a pawn. So at this, at this move, queen. Uh, let's see where is it. And it's an interesting continuation after this. They calculated a, one, a winning a one of a win of the pawn, <clears throat> and then eventually what'll happen is we'll trade off a rook and then. You can actually play something like if king there, here, here, and then there's really no way to stop losing another pawn on uh, e5 at that point. So e7 and uh, knight uh, b3 was played, and bishop e6. Bishop takes e6, knight takes e6. White has a positional advantage because of his the queen side uh, targets that he can take a, a yeah uh, to take a, that he could target. White has a positional advantage. There's enough weaknesses that uh, White can target on these three points here that gives White a slight advantage. He could start uh, start his calculating machine and ha have a line such as um, queen b6, which would be a line that could go over uh, queen uh, g5, 
queen takes c6 and knight f4 and then g3 queen g4 our rook um A C eight potentially would be a playable line too. But it's worth it's just not worth it. White's advantage has become more obvious since the previous diagram and he deserves an easier time to calculate. So if at this point Rook takes here, uh, uh, just play rook d2. Oops, sorry, not rook d7, uh, <laughs> rook d2, here we go. Exclam, and this is actually, we are gonna promote this one. Oops, let me make sure I have this perfect. I did go over an opening book. It's um, the London system. There's a London system, then there's a French uh, defense with, that we went over a whole book in. Uh, in the if you if you go to business law and go to our studies, you can scroll down and find that there's actually I believe two London systems that we went over, and there's a uh, one or two. Uh, one, one or two uh, French is two French openings. I really, I, I haven't gone over anything else but the French or the London system, so proper. So it's, uh, it's, it's not worth, okay, he can increase his positional edge without calculating just by doubling the rooks, just by doubling the rooks, uh, he just can, he can actually keep the edge without having to go through a ginormous amount of calculation calculation problems c5 uh, rook d5 at this point he's anchoring uh, white is anchoring their rook c4 knight c5 f uh, c8 Knight takes, queen takes, and then just rook fd1. And now, with a proper attack of queen c5, you're able to threaten potentially mate after rook takes. And then there's really no way to stop the mating uh, without losing lot large amounts of material. I guess maybe that is the best move. Maybe, no, that wouldn't be it either. We'll find out, kind of. Then comes, uh, oh, C. C6, uh, or C5, maybe. Oh, Queen C6 is what well was played by black. OK, gotcha. Rook B5. Now the idea is to. Uh, Um, the play rook uh, d d5 or d1 to d5 to take a scope on e5 there. Just a little. Oops. Uh, 
Let's, see, let's do that too. Sorry about that. Sorry about that team. I give them temporary bans, kind of to give them a little, maybe a chance. So you gotta always do that. Okay, C5, C3. B3, pawn B3. <clears throat> Exclaim at this point, this locks the queen side down. Rook D8. At this point, amateur uh, uh, the amateurs sometimes reach co uh, the commanding a uh, commanding position. That's what Andrew Solstice says. Amateurs will actually reach a commanding position like this one, White and Joyce, but they become frustrated because they haven't been able to cash in yet. But they uh, okay okay cash in yet. They try to calculate forcing lines like Rook takes D7. Like this line here, I'll show you. Well, oops, not that. Here, here. H three, and then um, that's and then rook takes our rook takes a and then uh, or H three and then rook takes a five is an idea. <clears throat> So what um, what we avoid by uh, doing that is we play rook um, b to d5. Rook b d5 is actually a much stronger continuation. <clears throat> we don't even allow uh, any tough calculating lines. What matters most is we take we, he's taking his time to provide. Uh, play on both wings, both basically. White's playing on both wings here. White doesn't just want to play on one wing. White wants to have a rook that can uh, play on both wings after this move here. The rook guards there, attacks there, and attacks there, and the queen will eventually overwhelm uh, white, I mean black, with the rook and queen attack. Uh, queen f6. This is to guard uh, d7 if the queen tries to double. g3, pawn g3. h6 to avoid a back rank mate. <clears throat> queen d7, uh, d3. King h7. And then Harry the h pawn. You gotta love it when Harry the h pawn comes. King e6, or queen e6, king g2, f6. So they're slowly positionally developing. Rook uh, d6, attacking the queen, queen f7. Bishop, uh, What did I did I mess up here? H6, H4, E, G2, F6, D6, Queen, uh, ah, not E7, Queen F6, or F7, and now Queen to uh, F3 with ideas of infiltration. On the king side, on the king side, he was looking for uh, to play. Uh, queen f5 uh, and then h5 uh, and try to go for a mating idea. h5 is played to prevent that. Queen uh, d3, 
because now that we provoked a target that later on once we get traded off we can start taking scope on rook a7 rook d8 dominate the back rank queen uh, g6 queen d5 <clears throat> with the idea of uh, checking and then trading off into a winning rook end game. Queen f7. For the first time in 20 moves, white should have calculated a long variation. Why now? Because if queen takes, this is actually what was played. If we tried uh, rook uh, a8, which could be a calculated line, rook d7. Should I have this? Oh, oh, sorry. I uh, went a little too far. Sorry about that. I, uh, I, I went, uh, I didn't move, I didn't go far enough. I mean, this is actually what was played, rook uh, d5 here. And so at this point, um, white should have calculated <coughs> rook uh, a8, or it, um, hold on, what am I? Wait a second. Oh, sorry, rook uh, d5. That's right. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> sorry, I was right. I just got the wrong uh, line continuation. d7. Rook takes. Rook d2. Or if um, on uh, he could play this move here. D5, D4, or is it, no, it's D5, sorry. D5 again. A7. Uh, the position has decisive chances for white at this point. What was actually played was um, this move, rook A7, the line, and then now white played F4 exclaim. <clears throat> this takes advantage of the um, weakness of uh, H5 because if the pawn were to take at this point here we would uh, be able to take here. The king would come up and you, then you could actually play here and if takes that type of idea. But I'm sure that they would have built up. I was a little too hasty on that. I'm sure they would play um, pawn takes uh, g4. <clears throat> and then after uh, g6 to su support this or maybe king uh, h6 kinda get the king now that the king is kinda offside the king can wander its way over and help support and win uh, b5, the b5 pawn. So that, that was just an, a sideline that could have potentially happened. <coughs> oh, rook did take. So we were, uh, we did go down the right line here. This is the main line. King g6. 
Ah, G4 is what I didn't, I missed, G4. It takes uh, an exam, uh, examination to have seen that after rook d7, rook to uh, d5, exclaim, rook takes d5, pawn takes d5. To prove, to prove it, but the position in the diagram that we we're looking at right here, had, uh, in the last few moves, why it doesn't have time uh, And right here. Well, White doesn't ha have a lot of time. He keeps control of the situation uh, by. Uh, let me see here. Did did we did I miss anything here? Let's see how we're doing on time really fast. So then see if I can do another one. I might be able to do one more. We can start the chapter at least. On move twenty two. So that would be right here. There was a uh, potential idea of calculating queen uh, d3 that could have been played here. And found a way to win 16 moves later. R, uh, by just trading, just trading, uh, uh, trading actually had a 16 move win too as well. Uh, reducing the calculation to a minimum is, m is more uh, difficult habit to acquire than the others we've discussed in this in the chapter of good habits. One training method might uh, might be to help uh, if if this is if you want help with that. He said, after each of your tournament games, try to remember the variations that you calculated. You don't have to recall every single one, every single move. Rather, you should try to re uh, re, re basically make. <clears throat> Uh, the candidate moves you spent significant times on, on and whether you looked three, four, or five or more moves into the future. You might uh, be able to make this part of your post uh, mortem, as he says, basically after the game. That's what it means. Analyzing with your opponents or even record it on your uh, sheet after, of course, you turn it in over the board. Some time later, go over the game again and see how many variations that you looked at uh, were worthless, were, sorry, were a waste of time and energy. You probably found, uh, you'll probably find that the best move you played could have been selected with a fraction of the time you spent on them. This can show you how much more effectively you can think if you, uh, set up so that you can do that so just remember to go over your games even if it's an online game let's say that you won or lost doesn't matter and find and think back and say which lines did I go over on my online game or over the board game and uh, what did I and I then let's say you won you chose the correct line ask yourself why you calculated those basically waste of time it's because if you only have let's say 30 minutes to play on, on, on the clock you're not going to be able to calculate 20 move variations every move you're going to run out of time so you need to find and minimize your calculation that's what he's talking about this is chapter three <clears throat> it's called little little tactics you know that every ta that you know that tactics uh, are they are the device decisive they are decisive moves you can use to decide the majority of your game so tactics are but they're small ones most uh, most of the other moves on your score sheet may seem like filler a pass is the, the, the passes you you made until you can pin a queen skewer a rook or fork two pieces so basically they're just there to get you ready for your um, move of the tactic that you're going to land on your opponent. But a master uses tactics in a different way. Sure, many of his, his or her games 
end the way that yours do. When you're when his opponent can't meet the tactical threat. But to get to that point, a master builds up a position, usually slowly until it is overwhelming. To do that, he uses two types of moves that amateurs rarely employ. One type is forcing and positional. So forcing first one and positional. That is the move gets its energy from tactics, obviously, obviously better chances in, posi in a positional way, such, ha such as by improving the placement of a bishop or a knight, or weakening the opponent's pawns, or forcing the trade of a stronger piece for your weaker piece. These are small tactics. They, they seem minor, most trivial chances in the position, in controlling in, contr uh, in contrast to a bigger tactic. The ones that uh, win games here is an example of a little tactic. This is um, a little tactic that we're going to be uh, going over. Let me see here. <clears throat> we're going to set this one up. I know I'm reading straight, <laughs> but I got to tell you, this stuff is such good information about, you know what? how we have to kind of re-examine how we look at the chessboard in general is huge. We need to realize that it's about smaller tactics and building up rather than our uh, brute force crushing uh, moves that we've been taught to ha go over like. Sometimes you have that blessing of being able to do that but most of the time, my friends, you're going to have to be okay with small buildups of pressure and, and then ex exercising your uh, tactic at that point. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll try to attack and you won't have enough material and the, your position will fall apart and you'll feel like, what happened? And what happened was you forced the position that wasn't there. Uh, but you tried to make something happen, again, that I'm going to say one more time, that wasn't there. You have to build up. Okay, here, here, here. There we go. Okay, I'm just making sure I, oops, I forgot a knight. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, let me get a sip and then I will we'll start into it. Hold on. Why is it stalling on me? There we go. game between Carlson why to move <clears throat> white has many pieces developed but as usual 
that's only a temporary advantage. Most of his edge may disappear if White can get a knight to um, a knight to c5. The edge, their edge, would disappear. Uh, in most cases, elite development can be exploited by by tactics. In this case. Um, the suggestion that was actually played here was um, c5, uh, knight c6. The main point here is white threatens to uh, play knight takes uh, e7 and also knight takes uh, d6. Uh, if uh, B, the which, let's see what was actually played by, um, yeah, okay, this was played, but we want to go over some lines, so I just wanted to play that, so I have the right move. That, the idea, so if um, B takes C, uh, B takes C, Then the idea is rook takes uh, there, and uh, if um, queen takes c6 is what you're thinking. Whoa, yeah, I went a pawn. Oh yeah, but then we realize we just walked into a ta uh, um, chess.com puzzle rush tactic, and after either bishop or knight takes, either bishop or knight takes, we. Uh, that lands on the board and see a queen. It's off the board. <clears throat> queen c7 was actually played here, which is the, the move. White would regain his sacrifice material. Um, with uh, c takes d7, then uh, queen takes d7. White still has a slight lead in development against, again, he, he can ex exploit a tactical motif with c5, exclaim White can. His threat is to, is to play uh, c takes d6, and after C ta uh, D takes C5, Rook B7. Uh, and if Queen takes uh, B7, then again Knight F6. So we're gonna we're gonna have the move that was actually played. <clears throat> then we're gonna show you what could happen if let's see, did it actually happen? Well, we're gonna say. I'm going to try to see if there's any... Ah, C takes D, there we go. Rook uh, B7. Queen takes, and then again, a beautiful knight uh, F6, and the queen will be uh, lost off the board. So they did not uh, go down that, um, that route. Oops. Five. Why is did I?
Okay, and this is the this is I think where it ends here. Because then it begins a whole nother one and we'll save that. Oh, it's um what it takes to become a chess grandmaster. I mean chess master, not chess grandmaster. That that uh that comes with a lot of training. But this is uh so but after uh, knight c6 back here, what we were talking about. A one move threat to win the e pawn, uh, which is a cheap, which is kind of a uh, tactic, a trap. For black, um, oops, actually, I think this is part of the, uh, this is part of, uh, of the line too. So this right here, he can actually play rook e7 uh, here. So I'm going to mark this with a uh, square because uh, this is a uh, another part of a line, a very important part of a line where black actually takes advantage of white's over a tactical sting. That's how many uh, how many amateurs play chess. He says that that. Uh, let me see here. Okay, but okay, here we go. But it is. But if that was all there was to knight c6, a one move threat to win the e pawn, it'd be considered a cheap tra uh, trap. That's what he says. For black to fall into and a few other tricks, there wouldn't be much to white's knight move. Black would just simply defend uh, his pawn as he did in the game with. Uh, oops, so this was actually in the game. So I'll just take the circle off. That was actually what happened in the game. They were showing uh, another sub sub line. So if you want to go over the sub lines that were in the book, it's down below this one. Uh, and and so that's that's uh, how many uh, she says that's why it would just be defensive. He says amateurs play a lot, play chess and they uh, they see these one move ideas and sometimes they'll fall for it. That's what Andrew Solsa says, and uh, they'll they'll think just one tactical move or hope chess, and so you can't allow that to happen. They uh, make tactical moves in the hope. That their opponent will overlook that their their uh, point basically. There's the hope chest we were talking about. When their opponent doesn't miss the threat, their move turns out to be just a waste of time. But there was more to knight c6 in in the main purpose. There was purely a position positional move, where white's knight looks good on d4. So the knight wants to go to d d4. Its real its real purpose was had two purposes. One is potentially to win a pawn, win the queen, and then relocate to a better square. And uh, closer look, uh, the knight actually did not go to. Um, it didn't. It actually. Let's see. Where did it come from? By the way. Oh, it wasn't doing anything on. D4, so it decided to. Oops. And then there. Right. Sorry, here, here, right there, and then knight B4 exclaim. More positional idea of getting the knight to. Uh, D5 in that play. If white can play knight D5, it is not just a one move threat. It's, it basically squeezes black's position. Knight D5, then the queen would actually have to go back to uh, D8. And B6 then could actually be a threat and drop the knight in if E6 is played, which would fork the two rooks and win material. So that would be not be a fun idea. Black understands the danger and reacts sharply with f5. Uh, f5. Knight, um, knight c3. 
queen e5, uh, let me see, queen c5. So I know what you're thinking. Why not right now just uh, just play this move, right? You're thinking that, I know. Because there's really no, you could potentially push here. You could actually potentially do that. And then the rook moves, the knight comes in. Not much uh, play the, after this, and then there's no real way to handle the protection of this pawn because a knight and a queen is uh, they're uh, attacking it. So that's why uh, White kind of had to abandon for a moment if they're playing. This is uh, a practical approach to defense when your position is in decline. Rely on tactics. Black pinned the B4 knight and prepared to, uh, to attack the C pawn right alongside with that. So uh, knight takes uh, A4 by the by white is an exclaim move. Beautiful idea. Queen A7. And then um, knight a6 exclaim. Because he's seen this uh, set up here. B takes c. And then uh, b6. is far superior and so uh, knight takes b6 knight, uh, oops not not uh, knight but rook with the idea of doubling up and going after the position c5 oops hold on rook b8 and um, Pawn c5, exclaim here. Bishop e6, e, uh, sorry. Bishop e6. Rook d, b, uh, like what we're talking about. d takes c, rook b7. And black resigns soon because rook takes, rook takes, queen e8, and then knight takes uh, c5, and the game is basically over at that point. So we'll call it on this here. Do you have any questions that we can slightly talk over before I log off? Any, any questions, I'll give you um, 30 seconds. I'll tell you in now if you have any questions. I'll give you a little bit of time to write in. Okay. Okay. If there's no questions, then away we go. You know what? I wanted to thank you for participating logging on I know this there was this is a lot of information a lot of change in how we kind of see calculation from Andrew Solstice's book is that we looked at it as the backbone of a chess player but ideas are actually are what what builds a chess player's uh, a master's perspective because tactics, if you uh, met tactics, but uh, calculation, you'll what'll happen is you'll run out of time, and you don't want to do that. You want to get an idea and base your idea on a positional uh, R 
a uh, kind of tactical setup but just keep ideas open for and that's kind of what a plan is is an idea you got to ask yourself what's the position are the board telling me to play and that's why uh, Bruce Lee said to when you go over material take what you know be able to do something with it always Remember, though, choices and the choice to receive the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, if, uh, life is as vital as a move on the board. So that's why what we have to do is, like when Andrew Silsa says, take, uh, like from Tom Thumthum told Tango, is to treasure your victories. So treasure your victories, but learn from your losses. Remember that mistakes do not define you. It's how you handle the mistake that defines you as a chess player and a person. In general, in any field, the Lord's called you into. That's why the Team Chess Cruncher motto is implemented. That we that's why we we say this: that as a team, we hang up our coat, we hang up our hats, we sit down and study when most won't. Team Chess Cruncher does, and that makes all the difference. And as Wesley so says, through the Lord Jesus, as I say, God bless. And I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and Lord will, and I'll be back on tomorrow. We'll keep pushing forward. And now it makes more sense of what Hannibal Smith said when he said, even inside of a random position, there's always a plan. Now we understand what uh, Han uh, Colonel Hannibal Smith meant by that, don't we, team? So, uh, two thumbs up, hoorah, be blessed, keep studying, keep doing ideas, as little as, if you have to calculate long lines, do it, but little, calculated, little calculations and having a lot of different ideas along the way will help you not make as many blunders and mistakes over the board. Okay, two thumbs up, hoorah, be blessed, go Team Chess Cruncher, I will see you tomorrow, and we will learn some more and improve our chess understanding. Be blessed. Bye-bye.